Hey YouTube, it's Tyra the Antenna Man. Over the past few weeks, I've received numerous questions about ATSC 3.0 Next Gen TV. When will the standard launch? Is it backwards compatible? Will I need a new tuner? How is the reception? How many channels can be fit on the new standard? A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to visit the Edge Networks lab in Boise, Idaho. Edge Networks is only one of a handful of labs across the country working on different aspects of ATSC 3.0. I interviewed Todd Achilles, president and CEO of Edge Networks, with some general questions about the new TV standard. Todd's company has successfully launched two ATSC 3.0 stations in the Boise market with 4K content broadcasting over the air as we speak. Prior to the interview, Todd and I had a general discussion about over-the-air TV and the digital transition of 2009. We both agreed that it really wasn't a good transition from analog to digital. The signal is very fragile in ATSC 1.0 and a lot of viewers across the country lost TV stations during the transition because there were just so many problems with the current standard that we use for over-the-air TV. The first question I asked Todd was a question I've received from numerous fringe viewers across the country. Fringe viewers are people that receive over-the-air TV broadcasts far away from the transmitter, 60, 70 miles, and they live in the countryside. During the analog days, they didn't have too many problems picking up these stations. There was a little bit of snow here and there, but the digital transition, the signal is just so fragile that some people lost out on stations altogether or had pixelization issues every time a tree moves. My question to Todd was, will it ATSC 3.0 standard allow better reception in weaker areas than the current ATSC 1.0 standard? Absolutely. There's a huge difference between 1.0 and 3.0 in terms of the reception, and it's really, I mean, it goes back to the core technology. It's OFDM based, and so it's more friendly to multipath and spectrally more efficient, and you know, the resolution or the modulation and the code rates. It's just so much better than 1.0 that you know, what people see out on the fringes is going to be clear where they probably couldn't get a good signal before. Some of you may have heard Todd say OFDM based. What does that mean? OFDM is a modulation used with ATSC 3.0 and it's very different than the modulation used with ATSC 1.0. 8VSB. 8VSB is very fragile, doesn't work well with multipath interference, and overall just isn't the best thing. And OFDM is supposed to help with some of the reception problems on ATSC 1.0. The next question I asked Todd was in regards to multipath interference. You see, some people have decent signal strengths, but the issues happen with multipath interference. Multipath interference happens when an antenna picks up a main signal from a broadcast tower, but then also an out of sync secondary signal. It usually bounces off a nearby building or when a car goes by, the signal just pixelates and drops out. Will ATSC 3.0 help with multipath interference issues that are prominent on the current ATSC 1.0 system? Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, it's you're building off of the same kind of foundational technology as mobile networks, um, and mobile networks are designed to use multipath to actually make the network perform better. Um, and so you get to leverage really that same uh, that same benefit for the for the TV service. The next question I asked Todd was about mobile TV viewing. Back in the analog era, there were a lot of portable TV sets. People had them around their house, they brought them on camping trips, they brought them a lot of places, and after the digital transition, these mobile sets kind of went away just because the current system is so fragile and doesn't work well with mobile viewing. Will the new ATSC 3.0 system allow mobile viewing on the go in cars and a lot better than the current system? There are some people that are looking at that. I mean, that's not part of our model, um, but uh, I, I know there's some people think there's a there's kind of a mobile model that makes sense in in the U.S. and in it may be more significant in like um, uh, developing markets where there's fewer TVs and more people consume video on their phones. That to me makes more sense. Even though Todd mentioned that portable TV viewing is not a part of Edge Network's business model, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Edge Networks is just one of several labs across the country working on different aspects of ATSC 3.0. Last month, I visited the One Media Lab outside of Baltimore, Maryland. The engineers there showed extreme interest in mobile TV viewing. So mobile TV and portable TV sets are likely to come with ATSC 3.0. Just understand that Todd and his company is working on a different aspect that isn't mobile TV viewing. 
TV stations that broadcast in the low VHF band, RF channels two through six, didn't have many problems back in the analog days, but during the digital transition with the current ATSC 1.0 standard, it's pretty much a nightmare to pick up these signals if you don't have the proper antenna set up. I can't tell you how many calls I've received from people in the Philadelphia region that have called me because they can't get 6ABC or MeTV2. And although I've been very successful with getting these channels, the average person person doesn't know about Antenna Man and it's not fair to them to miss out on these low VHF stations because the band is just such a nightmare with the current ATSC 1.0 standard. So my question to Todd is will ATSC 3.0 help with the noise and interference that has made the low VHF band a nightmare for TV stations? We're not operating in the low VHF so we don't have any direct knowledge on, on this. I, I think some of the research papers I've seen is that the, the low Vs will perform much better with 3.0. I, I don't know what that is, though, relative to, say, a UHF channel. The next question I asked, Todd, is a question that keeps coming up, despite the fact that I did answer it in the last two videos I made about ATSC 3.0. Will a new TV tuner or set-top box be required in order to pick up these new ATSC 3.0 TV broadcasts? Absolutely, you're going to have to uh, have a new tuner. It's it's kind of like, um, uh, you know, trying to get an old analog cell phone to work on uh, today's 4G networks, right? I mean, totally different technology. It's not going to work at all. So uh, you've got to do the same sort of upgrade. And and there's, uh, you know, there's some converter boxes that are coming. Yeah, I think you've got a USB stick. Um, and there's some early TVs, mostly at the high end, that are having 3.0 uh, demodulators inc included in them. If you just purchased a new TV set in the past year or two, don't freak out. It's not going to be obsolete and you're not going to necessarily have to buy a new TV tuner. We're still at least a year or two away from ATSC 3.0 launching in some markets, not every market. There's a good chance that your current tuner will be fine over the next few years. But when the time comes that ATSC 3.0 launches, you will have the option to purchase a set-top box the same way that a lot of people who have non-smart TVs they purchased five years ago simply purchase a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick to make their TV smart. It's the same concept with ATSC 3.0. If you have an older TV tuner, it's not going to be obsolete. You just might need a set-top box to access these new ATSC 3.0 broadcasts when they launch in your area. Another question I asked Todd is when will we start to see ATSC 3.0 tuners, whether it be TV sets or set-top box, on the consumer level? It depends on how people are rolling it out. You know, we are uh, in the process of building our own set-top box uh, because we haven't liked the timeline that we've seen in terms of the availability of tuners. I think there'll be more coming to market uh, this year. And, and certainly from a broadcast standpoint, uh, organizations like Pearl and some others have a pretty aggressive rollout on when they'll have 3.0 signals in different markets across the country. So I think, I think 2020 is going to be a big year for this. Join me next week for part two of this interview series where Todd will answer more questions on ATSC 3.0. How many channels will fit on a single RF frequency? Will an internet connection be required to pick up these ATSC 3.0 broadcasts? These and other questions will be answered next week, so be sure to stay tuned to my YouTube channel and check out my other videos if you want some more background information about ATSC 3.0. Subscribe to it for updates and have an awesome day.